Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the fifth community of practice keeping track uh, for the Paris Agreement. Um, we are at the time now, but I think we will give uh, everybody a few more minutes to join and uh, start in, let's say, two minutes. So everybody, please uh, stay and uh, we, will, we will start in two minutes. Si mon père Zayn, des mots de Flavien. Hein? Tu viens. Tu en Dominique, est-ce que tu peux me mettre quoi comme ça, je vais couper les micros please. Um yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, Dominic, shall we start? Maybe, maybe one more minute. Sure. Yeah, I still see people coming in. Um, but maybe yeah, just to can you take up on a mic. Can you uh, yeah put down old mic uh, on please? Usman Gindo and. Okay, so um, I will start now. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Reina Otsuka, uh, and I will be moderating the, the session today and welcoming you to this uh, fifth community of practice, keeping track digital public goods for the Paris Agreement. You'll see that um, if you're looking at my camera, um, I look muted, but that's because I have to talk from my phone. <laughs> there has been some computer issues, uh, but uh, that's the reason. So uh, please don't worry, it's not a technical issue. Um, so this is the agenda of today, but uh, before starting on the agenda, I just want to, first of all, welcome everybody back to this uh, very um, always informative uh, session with many government uh, colleagues uh, joining from many different countries uh, and perhaps start from asking you to type in your name uh, where you are from, uh, which which government or country office you're representing in the chat box. Uh, if you're a, a digital expert, please also feel free to enter your name and uh, which organization you, you are joining from so that we all know who's in the room and um, what kind of expertise we can tap into. 
So I'd love to see everybody type into the chat your name and uh, country name or organization. And as we ask you to do that, um, just to give everybody a reminder about what this digital public good for Paris Agreement is about, uh, especially for those of you who join us for the first time, uh, digital public goods are open data or open source um, uh, systems uh, or, or data that uh, that can that contribute to the, the sustainable development goals. And in our case, the digital the digital public good that we are building is uh, there's two products. Uh, one is the national transparency system, which is a system that will let countries to um, to collect and and uh, and manage the data related to NDCs and that can be used for reporting purposes. So such as GHG inventory and NDC actions. And the second system that we are developing is a carbon registry, a national carbon registry, which can again enable countries to join the Article 6 uh, and start your own carbon market endeavor. Uh, so we will talk about each of these in different community of practice. Today, we are focusing on the transparency system uh, and the systems have been built and will continue to be built based on feedback from the community of practice, uh, all of you here. Uh, so please do stay tuned and also uh, take a look at our GitHub space if you haven't yet. We also have a community of practice space where you can watch all of the past recordings. Uh, and also see some articles that uh, have come out of this uh, this community of practice and the DPG initiative. So um, I will ask Russia to put in the chat box uh, some of these links so that you can also take a look at your leisure. And thank you. I see a lot of good uh, people on this call. I'm very, very excited to see everybody joining uh, from so many different places. Okay, so this is the agenda that you see on the screen now. Um, now is the welcome and introduction. I will now pass it on, but uh, the first the first part of the session is a presentation of the updated digital public good code on the national transparency system. Uh, this will be uh, done by Richmond. I'll see our uh, transparency expert, uh, and then the second one is a national transparency system insights from Seychelles. Uh, we had a very good uh, inception workshop a few weeks ago in Seychelles on starting their journey on a DPG based NDC tracking system or national transparency system. So we have our, our guest from uh, Seychelles today joining and um, it will be moderated by Mosa, uh, also from UNDP. Uh, and then finally, we'll have a wrap up and next steps. Uh, in between this, we will have QA sessions. Everybody, please do feel free to put in the chat box your questions. Uh, we will try to answer as we go. Uh, and also, we will have QA sessions where uh, we really encourage you to uh, unmute Hello. yourself and uh, speak at the time. And I there's, there's some uh, people who, uh, I think, enter and get unmuted by mistake. We might have to uh, mute you from the back, but uh, please everybody try to make sure your your um, microphones are off. Uh, we encourage camera on uh, as well. So please feel free to also put on your camera and show us your smiley faces and um, nodding faces uh, as, as the speakers talk. Okay, so without further ado, I would like to pass it to Richmond uh, C, uh, the project manager and global transparency advisor of UNDP. Um, Richmond, uh, over to you to take us through the transparency system uh, updates. Yeah, thank you, Reina. Um, good morning, afternoon, or night, uh, colleagues, everybody here on the board. Um, I would like to just uh, present uh, this new version of the GPT transparency system uh, based on the update and comment and input received uh, during the testing phase and also uh, during uh, some uh, implementations and, and uh, a recommendation and comment to receive from countries and various stakeholders. So this is the new phase and the new uh, aspect of this GPG uh, transparency system. Next slide, please. Fresha, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay. okay. 
yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much. No, um, this is interesting, uh, uh, an interesting improvement in approach um, here, uh, where we have um, three type of, of users. Uh, the first one is the administrator, because we have now a kind of validation process included uh, in this, in uh, the input recorded uh, in the DPG uh, system here. So we have uh, the people who is managing the climate change information at national level who will be who should be uh, the uh, system administrator or administrators if there are many because it's a country driven approach is not something we can uh, we can uh, try to uh, mandate to countries uh, this is a driven country approach and also some government users uh, these could be uh, people who can contribute, entering information, uh, make modification, and 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 so on from various stakeholders at national level. And we have observers. Observers should be uh, people inside uh, the country, NGOs or people that uh, could be uh, uh, not required to integrate information that can have a look on the content and can make and can uh, download some information. So uh, these could be uh, people from UNFCCC during the review process, and also uh, people from some various partners working with the country uh, at national level and uh, working to uh, mobilize resources and so on. Next, please. Here. Next slide. Yes. Can you yeah, see it? Here. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's okay. Um, here you, we have the overall uh, dashboard of the uh, new infrastructure. Um, here you can see that uh, the menu is now more interactive and with some, some beautiful designs that can be, have been uh, uh, integrated and allow us to, um, to have information on, uh, on various aspects such as climate actions, a project. Mm -hmm. I think this could be. This is a dashboard, and can uh, allow uh, country decision makers and everybody to to have a look on the overall picture of a country in terms of information on the climate change. So uh, this is no something. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, co-host. You can mute mic <laughs> automatically. And this is something uh, very interesting. Next slide, please. Okay, here we have the way we are managing information in the back office or in the back side of the, of the uh, system. Um, you see here, it's the common approach. So the common process uh, uh, to get information and also uh, the common process as information should be disaggregated at the country level. And when you see here, uh, it's, it's, it's like you have uh, the action clearly uh, identified inside your NDCs, and then you it, these actions could be uh, dis disaggregated in terms of programs. We have uh, uh, one, two, three, four uh, X programs that could that uh, uh, could uh, reach uh, the uh, NDC action goals, and these programs are disaggregated in activities that could be. Uh, technical uh, assistance, technical activities, or probably sometimes uh, some report uh, related to uh, um, finance, related to a kind of uh, capacity building activities, or other things that uh, could be useful to implement the NDC actions regarding the program. And then what we have just uh, uh, beside these activities, each activities uh, uh, need support. It could be uh, in terms of tech transfer or, or tech development. It could be a kind of, of, of financial resources. It could be a kind of, of uh, capacity building. But every uh, activities needs to put money or to put something as a resource to implement these activities. And this is what have been um, here in gray as information that are directly related to to uh, the activities and related to uh, very detailed actions 
we have in our indices. This is these are coming from uh, various uh, partners, various donors, various support providers, and is uh, ver has a very uh, clear concisions in terms of of the uh, instrument uh, uh, used uh, for uh, to deliver this support. Next, please. Okay, now uh, what is important and uh, very useful uh, for countries when they are reporting or when they are drafting their BTRs is that they can uh, use this uh, software, this uh, platform uh, to collect or to export uh, uh, data. This is the report uh, button that is here and can uh, help to uh, organize tables, uh, related to uh, disaggreg disaggregated informations. Um, you can have also uh, the key data uh, that could be uh, overviewed uh, when we presented the first page. And here, it's important also to download information uh, and, and try to uh, make some ed edit information and validate as uh, an easy way during a workshop, during a process at your national level. And this is a, a key point that could be useful uh, to fill out the parts uh, related to uh, a BTR, NEC tracking uh, a section, and also uh, a GG inventories and, and key aspects of the uh, BTR process. Next, please. And also, uh, what is also uh, good is that uh, this uh, new uh, DPG transparency system integrates the CTF. The CTF a common tabular format used uh, to report on NDCs, uh, NDC tracking. So you have uh, the two uh, uh, CTF uh, uh, reporting uh, way uh, for uh, NDC actions and uh, means of implementation that could be uh, used and, and fully integrated in this support. And here, you can have the detailed uh, approach on the uh, CTF and uh, also for every type of sub-segment of the CTF related to uh, uh, all actions and align with the ICTU, information clear, transparent, and understandable uh, as recommended by the uh, Paris Agreement during the NDC process. And here, these are uh, some tables that could be exportable as Excel or CRV, and it's very important. Yeah, please go ahead. It's in very important uh, in terms of, of climate change and activities and, uh, and, and reporting. Here, what is key, sorry, please. Here, what is also interesting is that uh, this is not uh, a software to replace what you, we are using to calculate uh, 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 um, GH inventories and what uh, the tools are already existing uh, can make information available. This is uh, here a way to report or to integrate your uh, 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 GH inventory calculations per year. So you can have here a kind of traceability recording uh, the past data, the past information, and try to follow the trend in terms of GD emissions uh, in your countries. So it's not something we can help you to make calculations because there's already uh, methodologies and everything's are existing under the IPCC guidelines. But this is a way to have information uh, accessible and visible in a way to support uh, these policy makers, decision makers, the countries, the reporters, and, and, uh, and uh, every people. So you, you will have here uh, the GG uh, inventory interface and projections that could be uh, very useful and is also exportable as Excel or CSV as you want. Next, please. You will have this presentation and, and every detail. So uh, if you missed something, don't no worries about that. Um, here is also uh, the way we added uh, the uh, frequently asked questions uh, here. Uh, you will have also some documents, some uh, training, some uh, key materials that could be useful for you uh, to use this uh, this tool. Uh, I just want to remind you that this is not 
uh, something uh, 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 that we need you, we need to pay or to do something. It's an open source document, and it can be modulated by the countries. Uh, these are some codes that could be uh, also done and work and be personalized by a country uh, uh, directly. So here you will have also some templates, some frequently asked uh, questions document, and also you can have some key documents from your country that you can uh, use uh, to uh, integrate here and make them available for uh, people and, and, and of course, uh, observers. Next. Now, next, please, Tricia. Yeah. Now I would like to let the floor to uh, my colleague Musa and also uh, Georgian Douglas, who will uh, work and present the case of decisions <laughs> as an application. Uh, Reina, over to you, please. Thank you, Richmond. Thank you, uh, thank you so much. Um, let's pause here. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, please do feel free to uh, raise your hand at this point. I also see there's two questions in the Q and A. So. Um, let me just read that. I see um, there's one anonymous person asking if we can have a link to the platform or tool. And there's uh, Andala uh, Bendris. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Um, I think uh, he's saying thank you for an interesting presentation. How does par how do parties use this DPG transparency system? Is it accessible for all parties? Can we have the link to access it and to present it to the government? So I think this might be a country office colleague. Um, Richmond, would you like to answer, or I can also take some of the questions? Yes, exactly. Uh, probably, um, I think this question will 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 have answers in the following steps: how you can uh, get in, how you can uh, use uh, uh, this uh, uh, this tool in your country office, and I think it will be uh, relevant for you to to follow the case of Seychelles, for example. Sure. Um, let yeah. me just clarify a little bit more again. So the DPG transparency system, this is not a platform that UNDP is providing. This is a open source code base that right. we will, it's all already on GitHub. And again, if somebody mm -hmm. the chat Maybe box. Yes, in the first level, many problems. Okay. Um, and, and that we can, um, you can all see from the GitHub space uh, and configure it uh, so that it meets the government's need for the country context. Um, in terms of the DPG transparency system, we don't have a demo site yet. Uh, we will soon have a demo site that uh, we can share with you so that uh, government partners can uh, up, um, log in and test how it works and, and also figure out how to configure it at the same time. Um, but uh, if you can please keep in touch, uh, and and uh, also the, the other uh, person who who wrote in the Q and A and write to us. We will make sure that uh, you are uh, informed as soon as the demo site is ready. Um, I hope this uh, answers your question. But if there's any follow up, please um, please do. Another question from, again, an anonymous uh, participant. It's funny, I can't see your name, sorry. Um, but it's saying, curious to hear about the type of data being exchanged. Is it all open data or is there some sensitive data involved for which you require more stringent privacy or anonymization? If so, how is the model operating? A very interesting question. Um, maybe I'll pass it to Richmond or um, any other transparency colleague on the call to answer what kind of data is being, uh, it's not really ex exchanged to be frank, it's um, it's basically a very internal system for the government for this one. Uh, what kind of data is actually being uh, stored in terms of transparency? I assume this might be a, somebody with a digital background. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, it's a very uh, good, interesting question. Uh, what is uh, a kind of data, uh, some uh, data of activities coming when you are uh, doing the, uh, uh, your BTR activities or when you are enhancing your transparency framework? For example, you can track information on every project included in, in uh, your INDCs implementation. You can have also uh, uh, data 
um, included or uh, coming from your IPCC tools, methodologies, and calculations. You can have various data that will be uh, useful for you to report on your on your uh, BTRs and to have a very clear view of the of climate actions in your country. This is the country dashboard, but as Reina said, it's an open source uh, um, uh, tool that could be uh, modified and uh, and that could be uh, adapted to your uh, country circumstances and everything. Over. Thank, thank you, Richmond. Um, maybe just to you know also directly answer to the question. Um, so there. There, there are some privacy information in, in terms of, you know, the, the government counterparts email address, for example. So those who follow uh, more general uh, security measures uh, or security patches that each country should do once the, the system is installed and launched. Uh, but um, in general, these are not like privacy types of data. Uh, and it is not something that should be you know, shared widely um, and opening and closing is also depending on the country's uh, communication uh, strategy and data governance. So it is really up to the country to to um, identify which data should be open, uh, which data should just be aggregated. Uh, that also takes a process alongside the, the system development uh, as well. well. Thank you for the good question. Um, any other comments or questions, uh, please also feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself. Good, um, if not, uh, we will go on to the next part of this. Uh, this, uh, Rina, this yes. There's one question actually in, um, but it's, it is a French question. And I think yep. Musa can answer to that one. So it's in regards to, um, capacity building for the transparency focal point. I don't know if Musa, maybe you can jump in and provide um, a few sentences how the help desk is actually. Yeah. Um, it for the... Yes. It was planning planning to... In French, yeah. yeah. It, was, uh, it was planning to um, do a webinar, you know, a workshop to present this, this tool for all national focal point on transparency and UNFCC. For the for Lusophone and and also from from country, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is for yeah. We will organize uh, yeah webinar uh, for for all national focal point on transparency and UNFCC. It's not Musa. I think there's a lot of uh, French speaking colleagues or or um participants yeah, today. Yeah, I'd like to repeat in French. Voilà, je disais que um, on va organiser uh, une session donc pour former uh, tous les points focaux transparents sur cet outil. Maintenant, tous les pays qui seront intéressés à implémenter cet outil dans leur pays, ils peuvent faire la demande au niveau au niveau des help desk. Donc, tous les pays peuvent avoir cet outil. Donc, si vous êtes intéressé, vous formulez la demande et puis voilà, on va on va vous supporter. Mais à travers les bureaux pays aussi. Thank you. Okay, I can jump for the second um, presentation. Yes. Okay, let's go on to the next presentation. Yeah. Russia, if you thank can bring you, it again. Yeah, thank you, Rena. Yeah, thank you, Rena. And also, Richmond, for your uh, introduction and detailed presentation for of this of this uh, of this platform. So, as I say, I would remind you all uh, that all countries interested in this tool can make a request um, to UNDP. So my name is Musa, Francophone Transparency Network Coordinator in UNDP. So now we will discuss um, how countries um, such as Shell and Solomon Asland have built their NDCs monitoring system. So we have two presenters. The first is Justin, uh, Justin Prosper, DG Climate Change Government of Seychelles. So um, we will also hear from Seychelles, um, which has embarking uh, on building its national transparency system from the DPG, uh, code based developing by UNDP. And after this, we have uh, Douglas Merritt, a senior digital expert on uh, carbon and transparency, working also in UNDP. So um, 
if George or Jasmine are here, over to you. Uh, I have, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, of course, George. Over to you. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. My name is George. I'm stepping in for DJ Prosper, who is currently traveling at the moment, so unfortunately he won't be able to attend. Oh, oh! So, answering the first question, should I just continue answering the first no, question? Yes, of course, because the question was, um, why do you think that a national digital transparency system is important for NDCs uh, for reporting NDCs? Okay, so a national digital digital transparency system is crucial for reporting NDCs for several reasons. First, um, efficiency. A digital system streamlines the reporting processes, making it more efficient compared to the traditional ways such as paper-based methods. This efficiency saves time and resources for both government and stakeholders involving reporting processes. Second, accuracy. Uh, digital systems reduce the likelihood of error in reporting. There's also automated validation if needed in order to check and ensure that the data submitted is accurate, consistent, and in line with the reporting requirements. Third, transparency. Our digital transparency systems provide a platform for openly sharing information related to the NDCs. This transparency is essential for building trust among countries, stakeholders, governments, ministries, uh, public, and the public regarding the commitments under which we have under international agreements such as the Paris Agreement. Um, fourthly, there's the accountability side. Um, by providing a clear records of NDC commitments and progress, a digital system enhanced accountabilities. Government can be held accountable for meeting their targets and stakeholders can monitor progress and hold government accountable for any shortcomings that might pop up. Fifth, um, accessibility. Uh, digital systems makes NDC-related information more accessible to a broad range of stakeholders, including policymakers, uh, researchers, civil society organizations, and the general public. Uh, this accessibility facilitates greater engagement and participation in climate action efforts. Um, of course, there's data analysis as well which uh, the digital system enables the collection and storage and analysis of large amount of data related to the NDC. Uh, this data can be used to track trends, assess the effectiveness of climate policies, and inform future decision-making processes. Uh, I think... Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. My thank you. Side. Yeah. yeah, I have a second question. So what challenge does Shashel face it uh, data collection, monitoring, and reporting on climate, uh, and and also a natural uh, related initiative. What is the challenge of session? Okay, so one of the main difficulties in addressing climate um, uh, nature related initiatives is the lack of complete and accurate data. Without a compre comprehensive understanding of the data available, it becomes challenging to assess the gaps and priorities data collections efforts effectively. Uh, in Seychelles, uh, data collection for such initiative involves multiple stakeholders and sources leading that can lead to uh, fragmentations and inconsistencies in data landscape. Uh, these fragmentations uh, complicate effort to integrate data for standard, uh, standardization and compatibility hindering the ability to derive actionable insights. Uh, moreover, there is ensuring the quality and reliability of data poses another significant challenge as inaccuracies, bias, and inconsistency can determine the credibility of the report itself and the information it helps, therefore hindering effective decision-making and planning for climate, uh, climate initiatives. Um, other challenges include um, as well as uh, lack of human resources and also um, 
uh, uh, limited resources, technical skills, expertise, and that re also requires funding to, to train these people to actually use the, the system correctly. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And the last question this is for implementation. So, um, probably session planning, yeah, for the coordination uh, among various government agencies. Yeah, yeah, for this case, what is, what is the plan of, of session? Also, the digital transparency in Seychelles point of view uh, can play a, a pivotal role in effectively tracking the NDCs and reporting to the UNFCCC as serving a cornerstone of, of climate governance. It's uh, multifaceted functionalities, streamlined the report process, providing central platform for data collection, analysis, and dissemination. Uh, through this system, stakeholders can access real-time information on the NDC progress, as mentioned before, enhancing transparency and accountability in climate actions. Um, to maximize the utility of the system, a dedicated task team um, uh, comprises of representatives from relevant governments, agencies, needs to be established. This team oversee, could oversee the implementation and maintenance of the system, ensuring the alignment of national priorities and international reporting standards. Um, incorporating this within the, the system uh, is a robust validation process designed to ensure the accuracy and reliability of data set. Uh, this includes comprehensive data ver uh, verification and validation checks conducted through automate um, uh, work with all the ministries which are involved with, with the NDCs. Quality assurance, of course, is very important to measure the implement uh, are the measures are implemented to the, um, to maintain the data integrity, mitigating the risk of inaccuracies, bias, and inconsistencies. Of course, um, additionally, it um, it's crucial for capacity building initiatives that need to be conducted to enhance the technical uh, proficiency of users, empowering them navigate the system effectively and enhance uh, the standardized report protocols. Um, a robust data government mechanism governed by the management integrity and security of information within the system. There, there needs to be clear protocols and guidelines and rules and responsibilities that needs to be established in order to handle uh, to handle data and sharing of data as we've mentioned before. There also the issue of confidentiality, um, data privacy and security measures needs to be prioritized to safeguard the sensitive information from unauthor unauthorized access or breach. Um, continuous improvements and adaptation are integral to the evolution of this system. Regular feedbacks mechanisms soliciting for uh, inputs from users and enabling enhancement to system functionality and usability technology advancement and leverage to integrate new data sources and uh, analytical tools so in order to enhance to effect to, in order to effectively track the NDC progress and inform evidence based in terms of policy decisions so what we're trying to basically say is just um, it needs to, to remain a bit have a little bit of leeway and flexibility because this is an ongoing process and it might need to be um, improved or adapt to the new systems that comes within the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for your, for your presentation and also the case of session. I think we have a very good experience which I said during our workshop and it will be very, very, very important for us to 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 share experience from that country and also thank you also um george now we have um douglas douglas how are you uh fine good today uh thank you mosa over, over to you thank you um i hope everybody can hear me so yes of course yes great um so I was asked just to uh, you know, discuss a little bit about how UNDP is uh, supporting you know, the, the first stages of, of um, getting this MRV system integrated with the government, uh, introducing it and making sure also how it's kind of tailor-made. 
uh, to, to the specific country needs. Um, so basically, uh, the way the way uh, UNDP helps uh, this process and um, is you know not only providing the open source uh, software, um, you know which which uh, you know in respectively the software itself you know is uh, doesn't cost anything, uh, but there still needs to be a lot of background processes to to you know, to make sure it uh, it uh, is operating effectively and of course is operating at all in in, in the country. So basically we've. We do this through a kind of a four phase process. And uh, in the very beginning, base, uh, we, we, it, it requires kind of a scoping phase where we can define some of the country specific scope for, for, the, um, for the software. And that really relates to you know, how is the country dealing with its, its uh, transparency related information and how deep it wants to go into different sectors and so on and so forth. Um, that, that also means that we need to assess kind of the existing uh, MRV the, the first transparency framework. Um, and at the same time, we need to identify kind of existing data and the data processes that that's happening, uh, you know, how, how information is being shared, you know, what type of information is being used. Um, and of course, assess the institutional set of data sharing, the different procedures, who's responsible for these, uh, because there's just basically a whole underlying foundation of transparency uh, related data sharing and reporting that, that has to be looked at in order to make sure that the software matches the country needs and, um, and, and is tailored to the, the, the specific uh, um, activities of the country itself. And of course, we we also uh, get user feedback from the MVP. So we have like a core MVP uh, that, that that's that's in software terms that's that's a minimum viable product, but you can see it as kind of the core software, and and that's that that can be uh, updated and changed to specifically to the country needs. So so we need uh, you know user feedback uh, from 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 the different ministries who will be involved and the different people involved, uh, you know, just to make sure that everything is is fitting uh, quite well. Um, in the interest of time, I'll just uh, kind of quickly you know emphasize the the next phases but the but the scoping phase is is is, is quite critical um the the second phase is developing and preparing the software uh or you know specific to the country's needs because uh you again we have to tailor make it we also have kind of a validation and deployment uh, phase where we we validate that the software is meeting the country needs uh, make any changes that are are, are are required and then of course you know work to deploy that across um you know the uh, the in, in information system for transparency of, of the government, and then there's really this iteration phase, which uh, basically is you know the continual maintenance um, and uh, later improvements as as more modules within the DPG uh, system are included, um, as because as mentioned the transparency is, is changing over time, um, and then you know the countries have the opportunity to to add some of the, you know, these new and improved modules uh, as well that, that match that. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So there's really four building blocks when we look at making it country specific and deploying it in a country. Um, the, of course, the you know one of the main issues is of course the team um, within UNDP uh, DPG team and or UNDP in general. You know we we have kind of a a, a multidisciplinary team. Uh, you know, where we're looking at both climate policy, both the MRV and transparency parts, um, but but also di digital experts. So so there's you know a nice core team that that helps uh, facilitate uh, the Im uh, implementation and deployment of this country specific uh, software. There is of course all the data and reporting. So you know, again, you know, what, what are the existing uh, and future data needs and reporting needs? What's really important to mention is that the transparency system isn't only focusing on what you did in the past, but actually what you are going to do in the future. Um, so you know, it also informs things like what is you can help inform your your next NDC, which is due in 2025. Uh, but it also informs you know the support that you're going to need for the next you know five, ten years, for example. Um, the te technology again is that we're using this di digital public goods uh, code base, um, and uh, you know we can also help support kind of the surrounding uh, hardware and software requirements. And then of course the governance issue, which was highlighted by several speakers already, uh, you know we really need to highlight how that governance uh, system works in terms of who has access to data, who can use some of the data, 
and you know how we operationalizing uh, that that process because the software is great, but it's really just a tool. Uh, it's a great tool that helps create the efficiencies that that we need. You know, makes people's lives easier, but we still need that governance structure. Uh, next slide, please. Great. So, you know, one of the really first things we do um, in terms of of um, facilitating this process is uh, we have kind of a, a country mission where we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with the key uh, uh, stakeholders in terms of, of transparency. So that's usually, you know, the uh, ministries around uh, uh, energy related ministries, transport, agriculture, forestry, all of, all the main sectors which we're, we're dealing with and understanding how, how they're dealing with their information, what they have available and what they don't. But, but we also have, uh, we also make sure that there's a workshop in this process uh, where well, we have some training sessions, which, uh, you know, in one in introduced uh, the enhanced transparency uh, framework uh, and, and the project itself. It's quite important because, you know, the stakeholders don't really understand uh, typically the whole complexity of the transparency system um, and, and the transparency reporting needs of a country. Um, we also look at ongoing uh, MRV initiatives. So like in the Seychelles where we did this, we, we really tried to dig down deep into, okay, what's happening within these sectors uh, and across the government in terms of, of uh, transparency related reporting, both on mitigation, adaptation and, and support needs. Um, and then we also need an understanding of the requirements and guidelines uh, of the ETF. So, you know, we, we focus on, you know, some of the uh, filling out some of the common reporting, uh, common tabular formats that are required by the uh, Paris Agreement. So countries or the, the stakeholders, you know, at, at the workshop have an understanding that there's actually some standardized reporting requirements that, that are needed. Um, and then the fourth one is uh, quite important where uh, we introduce the digital transparency system, but also you know, uh, some kind of background exercises related to that. And the, the first one is actually how, how does the government organize uh, its transparency information, both in climate actions, programs, and projects. Uh, the diagram that was shown before um, about how, how the software is structured um, in terms of information, uh, but, uh, you know, the government actually has to structure its information re related to that as well. So there's a common, uh, simple way to do that. That's very effective uh, across governments and, and development agencies, I might add. Um, then we we map the kind of the existing institutional processes for, for national climate change information, you know, so what type of information is needed, who are you getting it from, uh, where do you then send that information to, um, and of course, if there's any kind of gaps in that process. And then the final thing that we really need to look at and, and we do look at is kind of walking through the digital transparency system uh, in making sure it's very specific in this case to the, the Seychelles you know, so that we have that you know country, not only country ownership, but it's actually meeting the country's very specific needs. So we can actually walk through the whole digital software uh, module through module and, and make sure that we can modify it um, or that it is modified to, to, to the country's specific needs. Right. So uh, thank you. Um, I, um, I guess I'll leave the floor open to uh, the next process or, or, or maybe quick questions and answers as well. Great. Thank Thanks. you so much, Douglas. Uh, Mosa, are you able to see the QA um, chat? Yeah, I'm looking. Great. No, we don't have question in the in the chat for me. So. Okay, I can just read out. There's one question. Um, I think George, if you can answer, and also if there's other, um, anybody from other countries that are going through the process, we would love to hear from you as well. Uh, and Richmond, perhaps from you uh, and Mosa on um, any examples you know of. The question I see in the QA is, um, what are the specific challenges uh, related to putting institutional arrangements uh, in place, any legal or administrative instruments that were used? Um, perhaps I'll, I'll first start from George, if you can share any experience from Seychelles. Uh, and then if any other uh, person, participant today here,
that has experience to share from other countries, um, I'd love to also open the floor. Um, George, may I start from you? Uh, and also for um, maybe Mosa and Richmond, if you want to also compliment. So I guess having an institutional arrangement um, is quite important, especially now that uh, the climate change and the ETF process is a multi uh, cross section cross sectional issue, and all minis relevant ministries and agencies need to be implemented uh, to be involved together. Um, I, I on my side, I cannot confirm whether or not there's any legal uh, institutional arrangement, but we do get involved as much as uh, as many stakeholders involved as possible. Um, for example, uh, when we had the initial workshop um, that was, I think it was two weeks ago, when we had the initial workshop. Uh, yes. Um, there was a lot of representatives that actually came because climate change is going up up the agenda for every department. Um, there were so many we had to get actually we actually had to get additional chairs there. So it proves that uh, and getting involved in those in those sort of arrangement down um, to get those uh, stakeholders. Great, thank you so much, George. Um, I see Richmond, you have your hand up, please come in. Yeah, just just to compliment. Um, and uh, most of countries has put it in place uh, something for um, to prepare the NDCs and submit it. There are uh, governance in place and um, institutional arrangement and some tools that could be used. And uh, this is uh, uh, a key point as much as possible to engage every stakeholders, every parties um, in this exercise on the DPG, as we need to report on and this is we implemented in the countries. This is important and engage various sectors, various partners. And also uh, we, re we uh, countries received information and, uh, and uh, support for every uh, stakeholders, for many stakeholders, many partners. This is important also to help them on board to try to collect every data that could be useful for the PTRs and for our report on uh, on climate change and uh, UNFCC process. Uh, uh, just to compliment. Thank you, Richmond. Uh, Douglas, please. Uh, yes, um, I mean, there's, I'm, I, I speak with experience of, uh, you know, trying to implement the, um, the transparency in MRV systems in, in let's say, s several countries. Uh, what's common is maybe that governments will have a kind of an MRV framework document where it kind of highlights the, the institutional processes and like the roles and responsibilities of, of the, the, the different actors. Um, it's also in some countries, there actually needs to be, for example, memorandum, memorandums of understanding you know, kind of a, a legal document about sharing information between one ministry or another. So, uh, so it's really uh, country specific. Um, you know, like our, our our colleagues in the Seychelles, you know, they they mentioned that uh, you know they they're able to do it more informally, uh, but in some countries you actually need kind of the, these formal legal documents between different permanent secretaries uh, agreeing to share information, um, and and. Uh, in, 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 in the processes in which they do that. So, um, and then of course, there are a few countries that actually have climate legislation, uh, like a climate change act or something, where, where information share, sharing is actually legislated into law. Um, so so there, there's not many of those, uh, to be honest, but, uh, but, but there, there, there's also kind of a, a, a legal framework uh, that often also includes the private sector as well. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. Um, there's two more questions, and I see Abba has his her hand up. Um, I'll, I'll just start from John from Haiti. Uh, for George, if you can answer, um, how do Seychelles overcome the challenge of a lack of data due to poor involvement um, 
of data stakeholders or in this ETF implementation process. And also there's a similar uh, question from Andulas um, asking from Morocco, actually, uh, how do you have any suggestion for a sector that doesn't have some data? Uh, for example, forestry is a, a good example. And I believe Seychelles also had um, difficulty with a forestry sector. So if you have any recommendation for this sector. And if we can't get to answers now, um, thank you for, these are very good answers. Um, I'm going to invite other uh, colleagues here on the call, like Kim, for example, on forestry. If you have any suggestions, you can put in the chat box while George answers. Um, that will also be very much appreciated. George, would you be able to take these questions? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, um, so, in terms of lack of data, um, so so the ETF itself sometimes not it's sometimes it's just to note that you don't have data and not you know um, making things up as it goes along. You need to to do some sort of ground baseline uh, research and try to find out what kind of data that you actually have. Um, sometimes you tend to have data, but it's not in the correct format that's needed sometimes. Um, but but you need to to actually know what you actually have. Um, in terms of uh, forestry data, yes, forestry data is is an issue. Um, we are trying as much as possible to, to improve our data. Um, hopefully we can do some sort of uh, forestry inventory that will actually um, increase the, the, the credibility of the data that we have because so far we've been only using uh, estimated data for tier one, which, <coughs> apologies, which aren't as accurate, but sometimes having a forestry data may increase the, the the credibility of the info. Oh, you got muted. Uh, did you? Uh, what was the last thing that that you guys heard? Uh, I don't want to repeat the whole thing. No, it was just I the last thirty seconds. I did mention a about uh, having a base. Sorry? Just the last 20 seconds, I think, you didn't hear. Oh, the last 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, in terms of, um, I think we were talking about uh, the forestry. Yeah, forestry is, is data on forestries can be challenging, especially on our side, especially when you're small like us. Um, having uh, first tier data from the IPCC tends to be, um, I won't say as accurate as it should be, but um, hopefully we will be pushing to have a, a forest inventory, which will increase the, the credibility of information that we actually have. Uh, like I said in the first one, you need to have a, some sort of baseline, and then you can figure out what's there, what's not there, what's missing, what needs to be improved. Thank you so much, George. Um, Abba, I see your hand was up. Um, would you like to come in? This will be the last question. And anybody else who wants to also answer these questions, please put in the chat box. Abba, please. Yeah, thank you, Rena. Actually, my question basically pertained to, uh, do we have any specific examples from Seychelles itself or you have some other examples from some other country? Because if you look at the... Uh, ETF requirements that we have now. So with, you know, BTR reporting every two years and then NDC division and then everything uh, sort of adding up into the global stock take. Uh, so digitalizing the whole plat process requires clear mandate in terms of roles and responsibilities. Now, as far as GHG inventory is concerned, you have those tag principles and you have a lot of data. So you have QAQC requirements. So if you have some examples that can be shared, because I come from India and we are still sort of, everything is still on the uh, drawing board in terms of how to sort of weave everything together so that digitally when you collect the data, also from the point of view, if the reporting is going to be so periodic, then to make the system sustainable, it is essential to have that clarity right at the beginning. So if you have some example from some other country where some sort of administrative arrangement in, in terms of bringing all the partners together and chalking out their responsibilities. Very good question, Abba. Thank you. 
Um, would Douglas, would you be able to uh, take a stab at this answer? Uh, yes. So um, if uh, when you ask for different um, uh, examples, there there are several countries, particularly like in South America, where where they they've they instituted those frameworks. I'm, Chile is 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 one off the top of my head. Um, they they don't have you know, necessarily a digital transparency system, but but they they they've instituted you know those frameworks um, in 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 general. Uh, UNDP actually has a publication on on the enhanced transparency related to the climate promise countries, so you can kind of get uh, an indication in that publication about you know these really specific things and which countries have some really great examples uh, for that, and then and then you know you're of course able to uh, to contact them, but um, in general. Um, you know, that, that whole process is very country specific. Um, and you highlighted, you know, very correctly, um, the, the needs to, to, to institutionalize that. And that's where, um, in a lot of countries we've created these, you know, in MRV frameworks, uh, which it deals exactly with the points you mentioned, um, and hopefully dealing with some of the issues you mentioned as well, uh, like, like the periodic nature of, of what we're doing. Um, and for the digital transparency system, one of the ways that that uh, helps is we also have like um, on-demand training modules, like like video modules, so that you know when you know if the country employees have a turnover, so you know what this year you may have somebody doing it, but then that person leaves, and in two years you know you you lose that institutional knowledge. Uh, so so there's some training uh, re re related to that, but the institutional frameworks uh, there there are quite a number of examples of countries who, who, who've implemented those. Um, and, but there are less examples where they've directly integrated the software at the moment into that process. So that's one of the things that, that we're doing as a part, or UNDP is supporting as a part of launching this uh, DPG uh, digital transparency tool as well, is, is uh, helping deal with that, at least from a governance standpoint. I, I, I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the great question, and thanks, Douglas, for the great answer. We're um, actually a bit uh, after time, uh, but Dominic, would you like to just quickly say a word as a um, next step so that we can close? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, um, I think we, we, we really enjoy this insightful um, community of practice. And as a next step, of course, we are still continuing. We will still continue to have these uh, sessions where we will share experiences and invite other countries. And I think the, ne the next time we might deep dive into the digital public good carbon registry and transfer system as well. But we will keep you updates and share all the information and the link after, after this session. And really thank you for, to all of you for joining us today and really with asking really important questions and um, making sure that you are you're just available for us. So yeah, thank you. And I will just pass that over to you, Rena, for the closing remark. Thank you, Dominic. So um, thank you so much uh, to everybody who joined today and for the wonderful questions and uh, discussions. Uh, we will see you again in three months time. Uh, please do stay on the lookout for the emails uh, and please also feel free to invite other uh, government um, focal points or stakeholders that you see might be relevant to this conversation as well. Uh, thank you again. Um, and please uh, stay in touch on the SparkBlue platform uh, or through the emails. Uh, we really would love to hear from you, uh, any feedback or any um, other questions that you might have along the way. Uh, have a great evening uh, or have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.